Write the phrase as a mathematical expression. Let x represent the number mentioned in the phrase. So here it says the difference of twice a number and three. So twice a number and three. And the difference means subtract. If it says twice the sum or twice the difference, that's a grouping symbol. So you're going to group the difference of the number and three and the sum of a number and three and then multiply those whole things by two. This one says three times a number squared. Three times the number squared. The sum of three consecutive integers is 372. What are the integers? Consecutive means that they come one after the next. So like five, six, or seven. But if we add those up, that does not equal 372. So we have to figure out what those values are. So I'm gonna separate it out here. So I have my first number, then in that list, like five, six, seven, they get bigger by one each time. So we're gonna add an extra one, and then from there we add two to get to the next one. Now we can combine our like terms. I have one, two, three x pieces. I have a one and a two, which add together to make three. And all of this equals 372. Now we can solve it just like a regular equation. Then divide both sides by three. This is the first integer. It says, what are the integers? So we need all three. If this one is 123, this one should be 124, and this one should be 125. And you can also check that when you add those three values together, does it come out to 372? And it does. The sum of four consecutive even integers is negative 28. So even integers would be like four, six, eight, ten. Those are even. There's four of them. And so this time, if this is our first number, x, we needed to increase it by two. To get to four to eight, we would need to increase by four. And to get from four to 10, we would need to increase it by six. Combine our like terms. This is one, two, three, four x pieces. Two plus four is six, plus six makes 12. Move that 12 to the other side. Divide both sides by four. So I have, the first one is negative 10. If I add two, that would give us negative eight. If I add four, that's negative six. And if I add six, it's negative four. And if I add all those up, it should come out to negative 28, which it does. 
be careful. In some of these questions, it's going to ask you for the value of x. But in other questions, it's going to ask you to figure out the full final answer. And this one has four answers to it. Okay, so this one says two consecutive odd integers, like 3 and 5. That would be x, and this one is also x plus 2. It says the sum of those is divided by 4. And the answer is 16. So since it's divided by 4, I can undo division by multiplying by 4. Or you can think of it as like a fraction bust. So these 4's divide out, and I'm left with x plus x plus 2, and 16 times 4 is 64. Combine our like terms. Move the 2 to the other side. Divide both sides by 2, and we end up with x equals 31. So that's the first one. And then we have to add 2 to that, which gives us 33. If we check, 31 plus 33 would be 64, and 64 divided by 4 is 16. The sum of 13 and twice a number is 7 less than, that means minus 7 at the end, 6 times the number. So we have 2x and 13 added together. 6 times the number is 6x, and then 7 less than, that means we take off 7 at the end. So we're moving our variables to the same side. And moving our numbers to the same side. And we will divide to figure out what x is equal to. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So what is the number? The number is 5. The measure of angle A is 9 more than 6 times a number. The measure of angle B is 30 less than 9 times the number. A sequence of rigid motions maps A on to B. That means that they are the same. So what are the measures of angle A and angle B? We can create an equation based on that information. So we'll move our variables to the same side. and move our numbers to the same side. Then solve it for x. But we were asked about the angle measure, so we're going to have to substitute it back in to this problem. So x is going to be replaced with 13. So we'll do 6 times 13 first, and then add 9. 6 times 13 is 78, plus 9 is 87. Then here, we're going to take 9 times 13, which is 117, and subtract 30, which is also 
87. So we know that since they came out equal, we have the correct solution. They are both 87 degrees. Kabir is building a rectangular sandbox. Usually when I see a problem like this, I try and draw out a little sketch. The length of the sandbox is three feet longer than twice the width. So three longer than twice the width. So the width, we can use a W there instead of an X. And then it says the perimeter of the sandbox is 36 feet. Well, perimeter goes all the way around the outside. The nice thing about the rectangle is the sides are the same on both of those. So we have the perimeter. We have 2w plus 3 plus w plus 2w plus 3 plus another w, again, all the way around, equals 36. Now we'll combine our like terms. 2w, 3w, 4, 5, 6 w's, and our number pieces. So we're moving the numbers together. 36 minus 6 is 30. Divide both sides by 6, and that gives us w equals 5. It says find the width and the length. Well, the width is 5. The length is 2 times 5, which would be 10 plus 3, which is 13. This did give us units, so we should include those 5 feet and 13 feet. Number 7. Given these two triangles are similar, what are the lengths of AB and AC? Well, AB matches up with XY. Remember, we've created... fractions to compare those because they're similar they should have the same scale factor so a b and x y match up and then a c and x z match up And we can cross multiply. So 9.5 times x plus 2 will equal 12 times x minus 2. Don't forget to distribute. That 9.5 needs to go with both pieces. And the 12 needs to go with both pieces. We'll move our variables to the same side. And then move our numbers to the same side. Then we need to divide both sides by 2.5 to figure out what x is. And that gives us 17.2 for x. But we need to find the side lengths. So we're going to plug those back in. 17.2 plus 2 is 19.2. 
and 17.2 minus 2 would be 15.2. AB is 15.2, and AC is 19.2. We don't have any units here, so we're just going to leave them as generic units. Here we have a digital interactive to help us think about different patterns or how we could write expressions for these types of situations. So it asks us how many sides, and it says six, and then how many triangles were created. There are four. If we adjust, if I had eight, try eight sides, there would be one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. If I put 14 sides, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve triangles. If I had four sides, I ended up with two triangles. With three sides, I only get one triangle. So if we made x be our sides, how could I write an expression for the number of triangles that I would get? Well, this would be x minus 2. You can see 6 minus 2 is 4, 8 minus 2 is 6, 14 minus 2 is 12, 4 minus 2 is 2, 3 minus 2 is 1. And we can't get any smaller. There aren't any polygons with two sides. That would just be a straight line. So 3 is the smallest x value we could put into that expression. Please make sure your workbook is filled in as well as your warm-up.